Thank you, Dr. McKenzie. That's a great privilege to come to the Mount Sinai again. The first time was 40 years ago. As, uh, I had the wish to be trained in surgery at this hospital. And now, 40 years later, I come not as an Italo-American, but as an Italo-German, because the destiny decided that uh, I would make my training in Germany and continue there my activity until now. So um, my topic is uh, the chimney reconstruction. And I have to say that uh, um, until a few years ago, the only endovascular option for patients with just a renal aneurysm was uh, the implantation of finistrated grafts. And with the good results in terms of safety and uh, feasibility, and also with good results on the long term. But we know also the downsides of this technique, which, is, uh, which are uh, the price, the demanding implantation technique, the uh, unsuitable arterial anatomy in many patients, and in my eyes, still, uh, we don't have, it's not a good option in acute case. Um, not only because of the availability of the P branch, which is very, very restrictive in, uh, in Europe, but also based on the um, limited experience and skills of uh, doctors uh, during the night and during the weekend. So we are more than glad that we have other options, and uh, these options are based on the chimney technique. This is one of the uh, first cases treated with this technique, and you can see on angiography of this patient who had uh, uh, abdominal pains and came during the night, that he didn't have any uh, neck below the left renal artery, but some neck below the right one. So it was easy to perform the procedure in local anesthesia through the transbrachial approach and transinguinal approach, as Dr. Asterman beautifully uh, demonstrate in, uh, in the live case. This is the kissing ballooning uh, technique uh, done, and you see that uh, the uh, aneurysm was uh, excluded, uh, and uh, the patient did very well after this operation. During the last years, we have a, an increasing number of reports, but uh, the, the problems were that uh, uh, they included a limited number of patients, and, with, and they presented also different combination of, uh, um, of uh, endografts and uh, chimney devices, so that uh, we uh, couldn't really know so much about this uh, technique, and the combination is very important uh, um, in my eyes. You see here the CT scan of this patient treated uh, for chimney in, um, um, in the thoracic, and you see the wonderful uh, wall opposition of the um, endograph with the a nitinol endoskeleton in combination with the balloon expandable stent, and the uh, endoleak after uh, the uh, uh, using in a similar uh, situation uh, where a stainless steel endoskeleton was uh, used. So we are more than glad that we have now some uh, studies which uh, were done to clarify the, um, the performance of the ch chimney grafts, endografts in different situations. Uh, so many centers from the US but also from Europe put together their experience, collecting experience, the, the results in f more than 500 patients treated with this technique. And uh, since Pericles, uh, we know that what is the best performance. I would like to point out that uh, uh, all commercially uh, available devices were included in this study. And this study was not funded or uh, yeah, funded by the uh, companies, so that we have really um, non-biased results. We know that the most used um, device in Europe was the Endurant and the Zenit in the US. And uh, some excluder cases were also included and other devices like the Jotec and others 
in almost 17% of the patients so that a statistical analysis could be uh, performed. After a mean follow-up of 17 months, we uh, saw uh, um, a shrinkage of the aneurysm of the BOSS patient, and this shrinkage was uh, statistically significant, as you can see here. Uh, the um, endolic rate was uh, already mentioned, 2.9%. Uh, at the, the complete, uh, completion angiography and at the latest follow-up was 5.8%. And this was present especially in patients with a huge aneurysm with a mean um, diameter of 74 millimeters. Uh, this study confirmed our suspicion that the, uh, um, the patient treated uh, with a stainless steel endoskeleton didn't perform so well, 3.4 times greater was uh, um, the uh, gutter-related endolic in this patient compared with the nitinol devices. And also the um, occlusion-free survival was better if uh, the endurant was uh, used in, in this patient compared with the other stand grafts um, in, uh, in other patients. The, uh, the number of uh, the um, chimney, um, um, chimney graphs used is extremely important, not only for the, um, um, for the freedom for, of, uh, patents, of uh, occlusion of the chimney graph, but also for uh, the survival of this patient. Uh, as you can see here in, uh, in uh, this Kaplan-Meier evaluation, comparing one chimney stand type with more than two chimney stand uh, used. Another point is the impact of the relining, which shows that in this patient where relining was used, the, um, the probably the anatomy and the result uh, at, the, at the end of the injury was not the best, and the um, uh, occlusion-free survival of this patient was reduced in comparing with the other stand grafts. A higher rate, uh, uh, rate of uh, gutter-related endolics was also detected in low-volume centers, probably because in these centers, uh, less than 20% of oversizing was uh, used. In conclusion, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, nitinol stain graphs uh, performed better. They had uh, uh, um, less um, rate of, uh, of uh, chimney occlusion and a better survival. And the patients treated at low volume centers had um, a higher risk of type 1A endoleak. And the uh, undersize of the endograft and the uh, and multiple uh, chimneys are associated with a higher risk of type 1A endoleak and also with a poor uh, long-term survival. Thank you very much for your attention.